So before we look at the example, let's recall what a free adiabatic expansion is. A free adiabatic expansion is a process in which no heat flows into or out of our system and no work is done by or on our system. So that means that the internal energy of our system that undergoes a free adiabatic expansion remains zero. So the change in temperature is also zero zero, the temperature remains constant. So let's look at the following example. Calculate the change in entropy of our isolated system undergoing a free adiabatic expansion. So we begin at some condition one, let's call that state one, and we go to condition two, let's call that state two. Now in state one, the number of moles of gas is given to be two moles, and that remains constant. So in state two, the number of moles is also two because we're dealing with an isolated system. So the volume in state 1 given by V1 is 3 meters cubed and the volume in state 2 given by V2 is 9 meters cubed. So the volume increases as we go from state 1 to state 2 and the pressure decreases. Now, the change in temperature remains constant because we're dealing with a free adiabatic expansion. So let's go to step one. So we want to determine how exactly are we going to calculate the change in entropy. So the change in entropy of any reversible process is given by this equation. The change in entropy is given by taking the integral of dq divided by t from state number one one to state number two from this state to this state. Now dq is simply the infinitely small change in energy and the temperature is given in kelvins. Now this equation only works for reversible processes. A reversible process is essentially a very slow process and because a free adiabatic expansion is a very quick process, we can't actually use this equation directly. So that means we have to find another equation that we can use to find the change in entropy. Now recall that entropy is a state variable and that means it doesn't matter what pathway we take from state 1 to state 2, the change in entropy will be the same exact change in entropy in any process because our change in entropy does not depend on the pathway taken. So once again, because entropy is a state variable, any process leading from state 1 to state 2 will produce the same change in entropy as long as the temperature of that second process is the same as the temperature in this process. So in this process, which is a free adiabatic expansion, the change in temperature is equal to zero. So what's another process? in which the change in temperature is zero. Well, another process other than a free adiabatic expansion is an isothermal expansion. So that's exactly what we do in step two. So because we can't use this equation directly, we have to find another equation. So the change in entropy of our gas is equal to the integral of dq divided by t from state one to state two. Now this only works for a reversible process. So we can't use this because this is not a reversible process. Now we just said we're going to use an isothermal process instead. In any isothermal process, the dq is equal to the dw, where w is the work. The work is equal to the heat flow in any isothermic process. So, we replace dq with dw. So, the integral from state 1 to state 2 of dw divided by t is equal to this quantity. Now, what exactly is work? 
work is simply the product of the pressure and the change in volume. So that means we can replace the dW with the pressure multiplied by dV. And this T remains. So we divide this by T. Now notice we replace 1 and 2 with volume 1 and volume 2. So now we essentially want to integrate with respect to volume only. Notice pressure is inside this equation and pressure also changes. So that means we have to use the ideal gas law to replace pressure with volume to represent pressure in terms of volume. So the pressure is equal to nRT divided by V by using the ideal gas law. And now we can replace this pressure variable with this equation. So the integral of dV divided by V multiplied by nRT divided by T from V1 to V2 is equal to, well notice our temperatures will cancel and n times R is a constant. So we can bring that outside of our equation and we get the following result. And now we actually evaluate our integral and we get the following equation. N, the number of moles multiplied by R, the universal gas constant multiplied by the natural log of the ratio, V2 divided by V1, gives us the change in entropy of our system that is undergoing a free adiabatic expansion. So, 2 moles multiplied by 8.314 joules per mole times Kelvin multiplied by the natural log of 9 divided by 3 gives us about 18.3 joules per Kelvin is our change in entropy. Now actually, this is the change in entropy for an isothermal process. But because entropy is a state variable, it doesn't matter what process we take from state 1 to state 2. The change in entropy will be exactly the same for those two processes as long as the change in temperature remains zero.